Indianapolis last night and the Natty. Georgia, Bama, SEC rivals going head to head. The dogs looking for revenge after a rough night a month ago. Pick it up second quarter. Bama with the ball in a low scoring first half. There's your Heisman winner, Bryce Young. That's Jamison Williams, projected to be a top 10 NFL draft pick, but down he goes and he would not get up. It's a knee. It looked bad. We'll hear more today. Bama up 9 6 at the half. Late third now. Same score. James Cook. The running game finally getting going for Georgia, taking it to the Bama 13. And if you're wondering just how into it the coach was, take a look at Kirby on the sideline. He's given Cook a run for his money, taking it down by the goal line. First and goal now, a couple plays later. That's Zamir White. He had 84 yards and that touchdown. Georgia up 13-9 going to the fourth. Early in the fourth, Bama still down four. It's Young. He had 369 yards passing. 28 of them here. Ajayi Hall with the catch. Crimson Tide looking to take the lead right back. But a few plays later, third and goal. They got a good chance here. Holden is open, but they can't get it to him. Young visibly frustrated. Crimson Tide settled for a field goal. They're down 13-12. Next, Georgia possession. This could have been the biggest game of the year. Stetson Bennett under pressure. Throws it away. Looks harmless as it bounces out of bounds. But take another look. They rule this a fumble. And Brian Branch on the other end of this, watch as he makes this recovery, doesn't even seem to be aware of the significance of it. But he's got it, and the toe is down. It's a fumble. It's a turnover. Bama capitalized. Cameron Latu, five catches, 102 yards. That touchdown tied up 18-13 off the turnover. They went for the two. Don't get it. So how would Bennett respond? That's the question. Here's the answer. But Donnie Mitchell, 40 yards and a touchdown. Take a look at the adjustment Mitchell makes on this football. I'll show it to you again. Spectacular play and a spectacular response from Bennett. Georgia punches right back. They went for the two and didn't get it. So they're up 19-18. Bulldogs then get a stop. Georgia back on the field. Third and one. Brock Bowers. Taking it to the house. Bennett finishes with 224 yards passing, two touchdowns. Bama can't believe it. They're down 26-18, but there's still time. Bama running out of time. Third and four. Young. Brian Robinson. 12 yards. Still alive. Later in the drive. It's a one-score game and one more chance for Nick. Here we go. How about a deep shot with just over a minute to go on third and ten? Say goodnight. That's Keely Ringo making the play they'll be talking about in Georgia for the rest of their lives. The 79-yard pick six, and that's the way it goes. Ringo with the play. Georgia finally overcoming their arch rival in the biggest game of the year. And the emotions on the sidelines, both sides, Saban down. Bennett, emotional. Kirby Smart wins it at his alma mater, the first to do that since Philip Former a generation ago. And the two Two former colleagues exchanging pleasantries at midfield. Georgia wins it 33-18, their first national title since 1980. And afterwards, emotions. It just hit me. I didn't even watch us. I didn't even watch Keeley score. I thought he went down right when he caught it. Because as soon as he caught it, I just teared up. I just wasn't planning on it. I mean, good lord. Uh, wow. Your national champion sets and how does that sound? That sounds awesome. That sounds awesome. There were people that said we weren't conditioned enough. And it pissed a lot of people off on our sideline. And they went to work. And before we came today, we burned the boats and we came a fighting. And I'm proud of these men. I just feel really poorly that we didn't finish the game better than we did uh, in the fourth quarter because we played a heck of a game against a heck of a team, um, you know, for the first three quarters of the game. I'm just, I'm just proud of my guys. Um, I love my guys, everyone on both sides of the ball. I just wish I could have been better for them tonight. What a night in every way. Georgia's defense much better this time around against Alabama. They were the best in the country all year. Bama blew them out of the water a month ago. This time the Bulldogs two picks, four sacks, holding the tide to just one touchdown in four red zone trips. And so let's dive right into it. Greg McElroy and the big swag who ready to go. Greg, we'll start with you. Georgia wins the national championship and gets revenge. How'd they do it last night? What was the single biggest key? Well, Greeny is weathering the storm. And this is a team, by the way, that's had Alabama on the ropes on several occasions in the last four years, dating all the way back to the 2017 National Championship game where Tua Tungavaloa came off the bench at halftime and led to some late-game heroics. However, Georgia, in each of the last four games against Alabama, had a significant lead. Three out of the four times, they had a double-digit lead, and Bama stormed back. When it looked like it could go awry last night, 
after the Stetson Bennett fumble, Bama gets the ball inside the 20. They go right down, score a touchdown on the pass to Cam Latu. It felt like it was about to slip away, and it felt like collectively in the stadium, all the people donning red and black were saying, oh, no, here we go again. And then Stetson Bennett and the offense responded. And it was as if they said, no, we're not going to do this. Not this time, not tonight. And they made an amazing adjustment, threw it on first down, made sure protection was sound, got a free play through a shot to uh, A.D. Mitchell, and then secured the lead, and then bounced back after a nice defensive stand by hitting Bowers for the icing on the cake touchdown. It was just a remarkable performance of resilience, especially in light of adversity. And adversity, by the way, is something Georgia has not handled very well against Alabama in the past. You know, and, and, and Stetson Bennett now becomes the stuff of legend forever. And Swagoo, no one loves the drama more than you do. And for those who don't follow this closely, this is a kid who was a walk-on. This was a player who was questioned so much of this season, whether he really was the right quarterback for this team, particularly after that game against Bama a month ago. And then for him to bounce back with that performance last night, Swagoo, what do we say? Yeah, it's just phenomenal. Listen, the, the drive late in the game is how you beat Nick Saban football teams. Like you don't, you don't, you don't have a normal span throughout a game, or you don't have just a normal kind of run of the mill game and beat Alabama in national championships. You needed those plays that Stetson Bennett made at the end of the game. And I give Georgia a lot of credit for giving him that opportunity. A lot of coaches would shell up and say, "Okay, let's see how we can slowly matriculate the." ball downfield let's figure out how we can just stay manageable and hopefully score a touchdown at the end monk in the offensive coordinator and kirby smart was like yo we going for the gusto it's either gonna work or it's not taking those deep shots <laughs> and fortunately for them stetson was able to make a couple throws protection held up listen man it's a lot of unsung plays throughout the course of a game but the block that Cook made to give Stetson Bennett extra time, I know mm. a lot of people are not going to talk about it, but those are the type of championship-making plays you have to have in order to beat a Nick Saban-led football team. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.